happy Monday, my bat wings saying hi. <laughs> Everyone always says I don't have loose skin when they see pictures on social media. This is a weight loss video, so this is perfect to talk about. Um, and it's like when you've lost so much weight, even just a little bit of weight, like you know how to hide your what you would consider. I, it, to this day, I, I, I go back and forth. I feel like people will consider them flaws and people's biggest hang up on weight loss surgery or losing a ton of weight is, oh my God, I'm going to have skin. I'd rather hide my skin, though I would like to see what my body looks like underneath one day. I'd rather hide my skin or have it than be where I was. So that's not what this video is about, but I'm just going to add that in there. So for those that say don't have loose skin, I do have skin like on my arms. I'm very lucky mine's not that bad, but since this is a weight loss video, hello. <laughs> I just know how to hold my body in pictures or videos or what my best angles are. And that's what people need to realize with social media, which I think I said in a past video, we need to realize with social media, we're seeing people at their best angles, posting photos that they chose or videos they chose. And sometimes that can mess with our heads, but I assure you guys that tell me I don't have loose skin. I do. <laughs> um, so this video I decided to do instead of a vlog this week because I said in my first video back to YouTube that um, my first, like I, I said something about like my first instinct when I made that video was not to make the video that day because I didn't have makeup on. I didn't have like my hair cute and and then I realized because I had been watching some older videos of Jackson when he was little me vlogging and those videos I'm like 315 pounds and I had postpartum hair loss so I had like patches of hair missing on the side of my head and I had no makeup on and I was tired and I had bags under my eyes I mean I'm still tired don't get me wrong um but <laughs> it's like I didn't care and like what changed like and um, I'm like really distracted because my people call this a fiddle fig my friend Eric is like that's a fiddle fig but in Texas we call this a ficus it's a certain kind of ficus and I'm really distracted because my ficus is growing <laughs> and I just saw <laughs> I just saw this beautiful growth and oh, it's getting bigger that's so exciting anyway sorry <laughs> um so I'm like, what changed that I went from not caring to caring? And I know this is not something I've talked about. And I kind of touched on it in that vlog. So I got, I think, four DMs and three emails when I did that. I feel like I just spit. <laughs> not that anyone's in front of me. But sorry, guys. My brain is like, hmm. if you missed my last video, I talked about why this is exactly why the doctors want me back on ADHD medication because my ADHD has gotten much worse while I'm dealing with heavy stuff. Um, okay, I swear I'm going to get to the point in this video. Uh, so, and now it's raining. <laughs> my brain, guys. My, um, my thoughts were why is it that I am so, like, I was so okay with that. But my my natural instinct was to go to, I can't vlog today. I look like crap, you know? Um, and I said something about how I was very, like, after, after I'd lost, like, 80 pounds, I just all of a sudden became very insecure with everything about my looks, my body, everything. And so when I said that, I've got a lot of messages um, where I think, I think it was, like, three people that had a bypass. Um... Maybe it was four, but it was like a certain amount of people had had a bypass. The other person had had um, a sleeve. And then the other person, which I found this really interesting because usually we tie like body dysmorphia and stuff a lot to people that have had weight loss surgery, especially because of the rapid weight loss. But one of the people that messaged me did keto and lost a lot of weight really fast. And they all said the same thing. Basically, they didn't want to leave a comment because their name would be there and it's they feel embarrassed and insecure. And they were like, could you touch on that more and why you think you felt that way? Um, could you do a video on that? So, hi. I told you guys I'm going to start doing bypass and weight loss videos still. So, that's what we're doing this week. 
So I think I know at this point what happened because I went from, it was around the 80 pound mark. I was very insecure for months and months, like probably six months. I was very insecure about my appearance. Um, I think it was around the 100 pound mark. I got, like, don't get me wrong, guys. I live for eyelash extensions. I love them. I miss them. But I don't feel like I need them. Like, I felt like I did to feel attractive. When I started getting them, I got them for Halloween one year. And I feel like my nose is running. So if you see me doing this, that's what's happening. And it was like... I don't know. All of a sudden, I felt like I needed them to be pretty. I needed to be perfectly done up all the time. I always needed to look like this and have makeup on. And that wasn't, I never felt like I, oh, I mean, I love doing that stuff. I love putting makeup on. I love doing my hair. I love feeling pretty. I love my eyelash extensions. They're not very affordable <laughs> to keep up with, which is another reason I stopped for now. But it, I felt like I had to be like that all the time to even show my face, which I've never in my life felt like that. I've always been very secure with who I am. And this is probably the most insecure I've been in my life. And you would think, oh my God, you lost like 80 pounds. How could you feel insecure? And the weird thing is in the past, um, I wasn't as thin as I was. Or maybe I wasn't. No, I was the same size. Because so it was, I was actually bigger so I've lost 80 pounds previously on my own. It was a much slower process. And um, I had like diet pills and shots and all this crazy crap to help me. Um, and then I counted calories to the point where I was giving, I felt like I was giving myself an eating disorder. Like I was literally like I had three chips and I would calculate it all. And back then we didn't have an app for that y'all. Like I had this book like calorie king, I think. And I would calculate everything in a notebook. And my, I remember one time I went to lunch with my friend and I was like opening it and I'm like, I can't eat that. Or I would like be cutting my food. And she was like, Heather, like, this is like not normal. Um, and so I don't know, like maybe I semi had problems then, but I felt more secure with myself. And I, I really don't know what it was about this time. I, I have my suspicions. I'll talk about it. So you, and what it is, you know, actually what it might be now that I'm saying this out loud is that I lost that weight a lot slower. This time it was much faster. Um, and seeing yourself change like that fast can make you really insecure because it's almost like you don't know the person looking at you. And then sometimes you look at the person looking at you and you can say like, I lost 80 pounds, but you see yourself in the mirror and you're like, I'm disgusting. I'm still huge. I'm still, it's, it's just, I never, I understand why they send people to therapy before weight loss surgery. I never saw the mental aspect coming. And for those of you that might just randomly be finding this video. So my insurance company, the way the policy is written, they don't believe in weight loss surgery. I had medical necessity. I had comorbidities. I had multiple specialists for my hormones saying that I needed this. And I could not force my insurance company to pay no matter what, because they had wrote a whole insurance plan to avoid it because they don't believe in it. Um, so I paid cash, I found a surgeon and I paid cash and I'm still making payments on that medical loan, but it probably saved my life because now with my heart problems being worse, if I was still 300 pounds, I most definitely probably would have had a stroke by now, the times I've been in the hospital or had major arrhythmias. So I don't regret that I'm still making payments on my surgery. I am still frustrated to this day because I feel like it was life-saving. It fixed all my hormones. It changed my life. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, so my theory for you guys that are struggling with this is that you are just seeing your body change so fast, you almost don't recognize yourself and it makes you feel insecure. That's just what my thoughts are on it. Um, I just, and, and you also experience like body dysmorphia. You'll have days where you don't recognize yourself and that makes you really insecure. And then you'll have days where you like, I still have, I still have it. Like you guys, I am like a small, extra small top. 
I, my bottom half is pretty, like, still pretty wide. I'm, I've been hippie even when I've been, the times in my life I've been thin, I have large hips. Um, but the skin apron, like, the last time I saw my surgeon, he's like, that skin apron, you will be half the size. He says I'll probably be like a four or a six with it gone. The last time I saw him, um, which was a while ago. Uh, so I'm still like an eight, 10 in bottoms and very like wide in the hip. So I'm much smaller up top. Um, I still have times at this size and I will tell people this and they'll think I'm crazy, but you guys have to understand if you've never had this and those of you that have, when you look down <laughs> and I don't regret the skin, I would rather be like this than I was at 300 pounds. But when I look down and I see my skin apron and all my skin like melted ice cream, <laughs> it's like, it messes with you. You're, you, you, you see that and you're like, I'm still so big. Um, but it's not enough that I regret any of this. I just want to make this very clear. It is a mental game. Like your skin will, okay, I showed this on my last vlog. I have skin, like my legs look really skinny. You could probably never tell I was overweight from my legs if I'm, if I'm wearing jeans that aren't hoochie mama shorts, which I do wear hoochie because you know what? I didn't get to wear that stuff when I was a teenager. I was chubby. My parents said it was inappropriate. I never got to have like crop top fun days in the nineties. And so I'm living it now. I don't give a crap that I'm almost 40. Um, but I literally, you can look at my legs and you never would know that I was almost, well, I was almost, I was over 300 pounds. Like it was like 315, 320 at my highest. Unless you see me in a swimsuit or the very top of my inner thighs. And if you saw my last vlog, you saw where I showed you guys what can happen with loose skin. That is kind of frustrating. Anytime I sit and I'm in shorts, my skin will catch on things like leather and it will just tear because it's so delicate and thin, you know? So, I mean, but I still, even with that, it took like a week and that it hurt every time I like try to get into a seat or something rubbed it, but I'd rather live with that than be like I was. I just want to reiterate that over and over again. And if you guys talk to anyone who has had weight loss surgery, lost a ton of weight, they will reassure you because the biggest hang up I hear is I'm scared of loose skin. I would lose weight, but I'm scared of loose skin. You guys, I want to make it very clear. My loose skin does not make me insecure. What made this, this is why I wanted to do this video. And I told the people in the emails and the DMS that I was just going to make a video because I needed to say this, like what I truly think made me insecure because I feel very secure in myself. Now I feel very confident again. And that is because as like the rapid weight loss stopped and it's, it became like, you know, slower because the, here's the thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I had people that I knew that had bypasses before I got one and I thought it's the easy way out, but I also know people that regained and I think that's why I thought it's the easy way out and it doesn't work. And I very much before I, you know, my, um, I was going to say my hematologist, it's my socialist now. Uh, my, what is a hormone doctor? Oh my gosh. My hormone doctor, it's going to drive me crazy now. I have so many specialists. I'm like, Oh, what are you called? Um, dang endocrinologists for two endocrinologists and actually three, technically three endocrinologists and my OBGYN told me that the bypass surgery would fix my hormones and it would also get me off steroids, which also contributed to like me getting as big as I did. Um, aside from my PCOS and my hormone issues, being on steroids, it took me from like, usually my top would be like 280 over you know, actually like 260, 270, it pushed me into, not that that was healthy, but like it pushed me over three, you know, into the, you know, 315, 320s. So, um, it's just, I thought it was easy way out. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I was a person. I was that person. 
And I can tell you guys, after being that person, this is not the easy way out. You have to change your life forever. Though once you've been, like I'm, I was two years out March, was it 2020? Yeah, tw March 2020, I was two years out. So I'm, I'm over two years out now. And I can, now that I, and, and I would be honest, some people truly have, is have issues with food. Most of my overweight, like being overweight, was from hormones. I was a super skinny, super athletic kid. And the, the moment I hit puberty, which came late with my PCOS, belly, like belly instantly. I was more active than my brother. My brother's so skinny. He's still like thinner. And I ate healthier. Most of the time I ate healthier. Because my mom was like, why is she over? And I, I don't fault my mom. I feel like a lot of moms in the 90, 80s and 90s were so worried about our bodies. And it, it doesn't, it didn't help. It gave me like, you know, complexes. And I was never able to drink real soda like my brother. They let my brother have real soda because he was skinny. And I had to have diet. It, it just, it, it's like there was an obsession with girls' bodies. And... Um, my mom and Nana both very much had eating disorders. I, I just like, they were obsessed. And, um, so that kind of got pushed onto me. And so I was, my mom was constantly having me on diets, was constantly eating healthy. My brother was allowed to eat whatever he wanted. <sighs> and I did more sports than my brother. I work, I, I was, but I was, I was a chubby kid. So when I say this, I also want to say some people genuinely like have weight problems from hormones and I was one of them. So me saying I'm able to <sighs> moderation now, I know a lot of people that had weight problems because they were addicted to food and stuff like that. And they are able to do moderation far, like far out like I am. But there are going to be cases where people have food addiction and you might never get to the point I am of being able to get moderation because my problem was hormones. I wasn't addicted to food. I hope that makes sense because I don't want to make someone that's addicted to food feel like you're going to be able to get farther out and just eat whatever you want because people might have trigger foods and things like that, if that makes sense. So anyways, I just want to like talk about, I don't even know why I got started on that, but so I'm over two years out and now I could eat in things in moderation. I was very strict the first like 18 months. Um, especially I was very strict. I did keto and all that stuff. And then I started letting myself have things in moderation. And for me, because I wasn't a food addict, I can pretty much eat anything I want. If it has sugar or something, I'll obviously do a lower amount, but I tend to stick to sugar free when I can. Um, for instance, my, the one thing I said I would never do again, and I literally brought this up here because I want to be honest and real. Like I said, I would never drink a soda again. So I started fixating on that. Um, I mean, right after surgery. I mean, it was like right after surgery, I started having this nightmare where, because that is the one thing that I did do is drink my calories, which did not help. I love, 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 love soda. And, um, I think that started because, excuse me, like I just keep spitting. I think that started because of the restriction that was in my household growing up. I don't think it's healthy to be super restricting with stuff. I think in moderation with kids is important because it can kind of form. If, if I, like, if anything, it made me go crazy when I was older because I wasn't allowed to have it. And it's like, well, it's my money now and it's my this and that. And then, and I'm not faulting my parents, you guys. This was just the way things were at that time period. Um, I don't ever want people to think I'm like faulting my parents. So it's like, I think I went crazy with soda because it was so restricted growing up, if that makes sense. Um, and I think if it hadn't been in the house at all, this wouldn't have been an issue. But the problem was watching my brother be able to have those things and allowed to have those things and have whatever sugar he wanted. He got to have a refrigerator in his room and he got to have Mountain Dew in his refrigerator. And I had to have Diet Dr. Pepper and I wasn't allowed to have those things all because my body was different. 
So I feel like that kind of caused a bit of a soda addiction with me. So it was my biggest fear. I feel like this video is all over the place and I apologize, but I feel like I already addressed the question of being insecure after weight loss. Um, so I think my soda addiction came from that, um, being told I couldn't. So yeah, that was my biggest fear. Right after surgery, I started having these nightmares that I was just drinking Dr. Pepper and it, it, it was like a reoccurring nightmare. It, I wake up panicking more than like if somebody had been murdering me in a dream. And I said, I will never, that's the one thing. And this, the whole point of telling you guys this is to show you that eventually everything will be moderation if you weren't a food addict, if that makes sense. If, even if you were addicted to something in a sense, I'm not saying food addicts because it is different that I like, I'm just trying to make this very clear because I want people to understand some people truly have a food addiction. Um, and that's extremely hard. So I feel like if I had any kind of addiction related to food, it was soda. And so it was my biggest fear. My tra so I used my transfer addiction was my, I already was like a Duncan fiend before. If you guys have followed me since Jackson was a baby, I became worse. Like my, I just subbed it with coffee. That was like my transfer addiction. Um, and I was and, and actually like able, I'm able to chill on Duncan. I mean, I still get more once a day, but, um, I, I bought the stuff to make it so I wouldn't go there as much. <laughs> But like I had these nightmares. So I talked to my therapist and his suggestion was, okay, you're over two years out. Why don't you have a Diet Coke? Why don't you? I was like, oh no. First off, it is, my surgeon said this and I see many people that have been successful. Like some people I follow are like five years out and they will have carbonated drinks and there it is a myth that it stretches your pouch. I think it would probably mess with your pouch if you were like, maybe in the sense of stretching it, if you were like super like early out, if it was a thing. I don't even know if it's a thing, um, but like it was, it was such a fear and I was terrified to do what my <laughs> therapist suggested to get over the nightmare. But so I did it finally. I had one and I was like, oh, I was fine. I had a Diet Coke and then I didn't have one again. Like I wasn't like craving it and like a fiend like I was in my dream. And it did psychologically help. I confronted something that was an anxiety and used to be an addiction. And I saw that that was like the one thing I was scared of and it was actually okay. So now I allow myself to have them. I get the zero sugar and I actually tried Dr. Pepper again, which was another, it was like another layer. So I started with Diet Coke and when I saw that was okay, then I was like, try Diet Dr. Pepper. I don't really like Dr. Diet Dr. Pepper. I love the zero drinks. Um, and now I can have that and it's just like a nice treat sometimes. And I have not craved at all like a real soda with sugar. And I know people are like, oh my God, the diet stuff's chemicals. You're doing this match your body. Y'all, I am already like beyond this year, like health wise. I'm probably not going to live to a ripe old age with my heart. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Like it's been made very clear to me. So if I want to have a diet soda with tons of chemicals, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so anyways, that's morbid, but I'm just being real with y'all. So I can have these now, like, you know, and I'm fine. I don't feel addicted. I still do everything else I'm supposed to do. I haven't gained any weight. And it's been a few months of, my God, it's probably been like maybe, maybe six months. I'd say maybe six months I've been able to have these and there's no like addiction there again. Like I do love them. But it actually cut down on, like, my coffee, um, which probably was more unhealthy because I'd have, I do have swirl in my coffee. Um, at first, I would get, like, one pump, which is 12 grams of swirl, and now I can have, like, a couple, and I, you know. So it probably helped to be cut down my sugar, too. But I want to be real and honest with you guys, there's going to come a time where you 
can start feeling like you're living again right after you have surgery. Another thing like the instant regret I had was like, since we're just airing all these regrets out from surgery, the only regret I had at first, and I felt like it was like buyer's remorse was I was like, miss, I was mourning food. I was like, I'm never going to have food again. I should do a whole video on that. I'm going to do a whole video on that for people that are searching for these kind of videos. But I was mourning food. I was feeling like I was never going to have real food again. Like I, I would like watch people eat foods I love like we're gonna get bread again and now I have bread and I know it's fine and like moderation moderation is key and sometimes I'm like so this is what it's like to have normal hormones and just be able to eat in moderation and not become 300 pounds <laughs> like it's just such a weird thing but the point of this video which I'm gonna wrap it up because we're at 25 minutes I have to edit this today is if you're feeling really insecure it is probably the rapid weight loss that is what I honestly, when I look back and reflect, is the rapid weight loss and seeing myself change. Another thing too is my face was very full, especially from steroids. My face was very big. And when all that kind of starts coming off and you're like, I, I do have a turkey. At certain angles, I'm like, oh my God, I, I swear I have a... <sighs> A woman's private part, I'm not going to say because I don't want my video to get dinged for like bad words. <laughs> I swear I have one right here. Like sometimes it just looks like this. <laughs> and like sometimes I see that in pictures. I'm like, oh God, I got to stick my neck out. But it's like, you know, I want to get threading because it's cheaper than a lift. Like I do kind of want that. But so as you lose weight and like your face kind of settles, you're gonna, if you had wrinkles, they might have filled in more when your face was plumper. So I do have spots where I'm like, oh my God, what is it? Oh my God. Like I feel, I still have moments where I feel a little insecure about that sometimes, but it's just so many changes to your body so fast. It makes you really insecure. And I was so insecure. I was so insecure. And now I literally, I'm just back to the mindset I was where I don't care if people like me. I don't care if people think I'm pretty. I don't care. Like, like I'd like people to think I'm pretty, but it's not like I need people to think I'm pretty. I need to look put together all the time. I need to do this. It's not a stress in my life anymore, which it had become because I had just become so insecure. And I think it's just a part of the process. And I kind of think that's why there's, you know, so much, Actually, I don't think there's enough stress on mental health with this journey. I think that there is some because they force you to do because they because what can happen is people can like do crazy things right after they start losing a lot of weight. And that's kind of why they have like the mental evaluation to make sure you're not going to be somebody that's going to just act completely out of character and do something crazy and screw up your life. Um, but I feel like there could be more mental stuff going on for the surgery. And I feel like that aspect is really important and that maybe we don't focus on that enough because my, my doctor told me you're a cash patient. You're not going to have to do this. I don't, he does for his cash patients. He does require like mental evaluations. If he feels like there's going to be some issues there, like when he has like one-on-one -on -one discussions with him, if he sees things he's concerned about, then he's going to have that, like this evaluation needs to be there for me. He's like, I don't see that. What I do see is you struggling with, he's like, I see you struggling with body dysmorphia because everyone does. And I'm like, Psh, whatever body dysmorphia. And now I'm like, yeah, I can be like, I'm so wide. I'm so big. I look in the mirror and I still see who I was at 300 pounds. I have days like that still, but it's totally worth it. And I just feel like that's a normal part of the journey. So if you're feeling really insecure right now and you're like 80 pounds down or like you've lost, no matter how you've lost this weight, if you've lost weight rapidly and you're feeling it, I feel like just like, hold on because you're gonna get back to yourself, especially if you had weight loss surgery as things kind of slow down, you're going to find yourself again. You're going to regain that confidence. It's just really, I truly, really feel it's the rapid weight loss. And as soon as things slowed down, my body's still changing constantly too. Like my size is changing. The, the scale might not change, but like my body's constantly changing. And what I look like a year ago 
it's like if what I fit into is like this is so weird because I haven't like weight loss I haven't lost like you know 50 pounds and this and that but your body's constantly changing so I just want to stress to you guys too if you're already thinking about plastics and you're only a year out just wait wait till you're two years out because your body is still going to change and you don't want to go do something like that and then you could have actually like had things change more things settle more that they could have removed so is there anything just hold off on plastics till two years there's a reason they say that like wait and I truly I truly think think like people should as for plastics the only thing I would do probably is have a tummy tuck um I can live with this <laughs> like I can live with that I can live with my thighs I'm hoping if I ever get a tummy tuck when they kind of pull it up that will pull that thigh thigh skin up enough to not get hurt anymore anyways I'm gonna end this video because it's 30 minutes and I'm gonna go edit all this and make sure I cut out where I said the f word <laughs> okay guys I'll see you guys in my next video bye